And then just be very careful yeah. of coming down. Yeah. It's all original. This is, pretty, this is the, uh, as far as I know, it's the first time three groups have ever gotten together on the same night to investigate the same place. And get, you know, three differing opinions, three different investigative styles, and hopefully we'll come up with some really great evidence to, you know, support the theories that exist here. I joined a team out of Worcester back in 2006 because I'd been reading books and tons of information on the subject and I really wanted to get active. And the more I get active, the more I realize that I didn't want to find answers for the stuff that was going on in my home at all. I just wanted to be able to get out and help people who didn't have the answers, you know, find the answers or, or at least give them an explanation as to why and to try to help them get through it. But John Stone's Inn, it was just a local legend. It, it was something we talked about in high school over the, the lunch table, you know, you heard about the ghost of John Stone's Inn. And I would come here over the years and grab a bite to eat and, you know, we'd want something to happen. We'd want something to happen never really happened. Our attempt, I believe this evening, would be trying to document if there is any paranormal phenomena and tie it into some of the new information we have in the history. Um, a lot of the history that I've uncovered has to do with um, the owner, uh, William Alfred Scott. He was the longest owner of this building. He owned it from 1858 to 1904. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of tragedies in that time. He lost three sons, two to cirrhosis of the liver and one to um, I believe it was called general paralysis. Hmm. And he was um, committed to a hospital for that. His wife died here. He also attempted suicide on the boat. Hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of things. If, you re you know, if you've ever researched the paranormal, that I'll, sometimes I like to tell you that bad feelings, stuff like that can imprint on an area. And there might be a reason why people experience the stuff that they say they do. And you know, with all the claims that have come out of this place over the years, they've come from customers, they've come from people who have passed by in the street, law enforcement officials. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you know, a place that's trying to, to market ghosts to get people in the door. There's actually really something going on. Tonight, in summary, we're planning on trying to capture one of the uh, spirits in here in some way, show evidence that the, for our group and ourselves, and give personal closure to my mother and my grandmother of what has happened here and what is here. And how do you go about that? Uh, we go about that. Our motto is actually truth through science. Um, we do, like I have myself, I use, we use an infrared camera. I have infrared flashlights, UV flashlights, um, different flashlights for different um, contrast levels and lighting and cameras that will see, th allow the camera to see things that the human eye can't see, allow the celluloid film that I have to pick up things that even the digital cameras can't see. We have um, two EMF detectors, electromagnetic field detectors. We also have two thermometers so we know if that's being set off by um, just wiring in the building or someone's cell phone or if it's an actual hotspot as we call it, even though it's usually colder than the air around it, of a spirit trying to manifest itself. Fields. Um, there shouldn't be, well, the smoke detector is going to set it off in the TV, but down this area away from the electrical work, um, if there's anything Actually, the power cable isn't doing anything. But uh, if you pick up with anything, then uh, it'll sh hopefully it'll show up. Sorry.